Anyways. I feel like I would only be present for the cider episode. Welcome back Welcome to the Garfonomics, the world's best unofficial, official Garfield-based economics and politics podcast. My guest host today is uh, just an average guy, and he's choking <clears throat> on a beer. I think maybe I have tonsillitis. You have tonsillitis? That's a, that's a condition, right? Hello, <clears throat> average, average guest. How's it going? Also, average host. That's right. We actually, we were uh, in a competition recently to see who was the, uh, the most average man, and uh, it was almost a dead tie between you and me. Right. What did you want to talk about for this podcast? Neo-feudalism, and I was thinking about... Um, Garfield, I imagine. Garfield, as always. <laughs> it's always on the back of my mind. Yeah. Uh, and so I thought about the book from the 80s, Garfield, The Knight in Shining Armor, which is like a, it's like a short, like, kids book type deal. And it was like really fucking hard to find online. There's nowhere to like pirate it. There's nowhere to buy like a digital copy of it. It That's... just, it doesn't exist digitally. Um, Pirating but... is how you live your life. So I don't know how you even manage I... to live without something you can't get for free. That's true, you know. They said you can't pirate your rent or your utility bills, but I found a way. Uh, but no, like I, we ended up finding it on like some website, but it was a lot of work. But anyways. Uh, yeah. So I read it. You read it. What, what were your thoughts about Garfield, the knight in shining armor? Pretty classic story. I thought that, I thought that it was kind of weird that the little teddy bear suddenly became, I assume, female. Okay, yeah, I was thinking the same thing because so for like the plot of the book, like Garfield, he steals Odie's toy teddy bear named Pookie and he cuddles up with Pookie and he goes to sleep and he has this dream where Pookie is now called Pukella and is being uh, guarded in a castle by a fire breathing dragon and Garfield has to save Pukella. But yeah, like to what you were saying, like Pookie's name is normally Pookie. Right, but now it changes because it has to be what, female to be Garfield's girlfriend? I Which guess tells so. me mm -hmm. that Garfield maybe maybe swings both ways. I think that Garfield is a uh a uh, non gender ally and uh hero, a uh, gender non binary icon. Right. Uh, He's who you looked up to when you were growing up. Absolutely. Absolutely. I read that Jim Davis interview where they were like talking about Garfield's gender and Jim Davis was like, oh, don't, I don't look at Garfield as like a boy or a girl. He, I think of him as genderless. And I was like, hell yeah. Icon. <laughs> Pookie becomes like Garf, it, Pookie becomes obviously like female gendered. It, it was a, it was a dream. So there's that. Yeah, but this leads to, like, does Garfield think of Pookie, Odie's toy, as, like, Garfield's girlfriend? I think he does. Do, what you, is, th do you think Garfield humps Pookie? What does Odie think about that? Does Odie think? I don't think Odie has thoughts. I've only seen Odie, like, bark or, like, drool or, like, lick or slobber. Sounds like you. That does sound like me. Right. Anything else about this, uh, about this? When did it come out? 80s? This came out in like the 80s, I think. 80s. Yeah. It seemed, I don't know, it, it seemed like kind of modern, I guess. Modern in what way? I don't know. It, it looked modern. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking uh, at the <laughs> I was looking at the drawings on the the little PDF, I guess, that I was scrolling through. Yeah, the shady PDF from yeah. the black market. It looked all right. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I, I think it holds up pretty well. Uh, but that's an interesting point that you say like modern you know this is a good segue like I'm you say sure modern is. and like attributing modernity to like uh, uh, a feudalistic like fairy tale of like knights and dragons and whatnot reminds me of neo-feudalism you know what i mean I something do. i've been thinking about it reminds me of kingdom come deliverance actually which i've been playing a lot that's a good game feudalism is very present I would assume so, yeah. yes. It takes place during a uh, feudalistic time period. How do you feel about feudalism? It's a good system or I don't no? Know I feel about feudal I No, it sucks, dude. Like, okay, no. It, actually, I take that back. It would be great if I was, like, 
the Duke of Wessex or something. Okay, so it sucks then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, what you're saying. you know, I would like, you know, you'd have some dumbass peasants being like, please, can I have a tax lien? And I'd be like, no, dude. <laughs> Give me all your grain. Give me every bit of grain you have, dumbass. <laughs> it's not good because it's a system, essentially, where landlords, imagine if your landlord, like, also <laughs> was the president of the United States of America. Yeah. It sounds like a bad deal. That would deal. suck. That, like that would suck. Deal. Imagine your landlord was the city mayor. Hmm. And he can also make all the rules about the property. Wait, that's a good point. Feudalism is basically just like landlords, but as the the ruling political re- like class. Landlords are awful. This is a Maoist podcast now. <laughs> Anti-landlord. Um, <clears throat> no, but dude, I was thinking about neo-feudalism. What do you think about the idea that... Um, we're going to go back to like a feudalistic system. Um, but like where the, the Lords are like, um, I think the idea that I saw floating around was like the Lords are going to be like companies. So like Amazon or like, like you're going to live in like a housing unit which is constructed and owned by like Amazon. We already live in that work. time. What are you talking about? <laughs> so what do I think about neo feudalism? I think it sucks. I don't, I don't think we should be doing that. <laughs> I don't either. But like, what do, what do you think like of it as an idea? My my personal take is that it's nonsense. And what when people talk about neo feudalism, what they're talking about is just corporatocracy and like company towns. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that it wouldn't be hard for a a system to even work that way, like right now, even with the, the, like the five big companies that we have. Yeah. Live, work, and shop in the same place. And it would all be owned by like the Disney company. Sounds like Bioshock. I mean, that's, that's the message it's giving off. That makes sense. That like mega corporations are fucking trash. Yeah. I mean, sort of. I mean, I guess Borderlands also kind of gives that vibe off. I think most like sci-fi games would give that off. Speaking of which, like Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, that's coming out, and that that's it's going to be all like that. You know, that's, like, that's everything. The idea, is, yeah, everything's like the government is just the you know corporations and like. So it makes you think that like if everybody's fictional recreation of the future looks like that, mm-hmm. more than likely it's probably going to be like that right i would think so i mean we are we already kind of see it happening um i think that that's also like what people get into when they start thinking about like late stage capitalism like it just leads to like that like corporatocracy and like cyberpunk future but probably way less cool than like a cyberpunk 2077 future i'm excited to play it me too I like what does that. it come out like next month <sighs> you know theoretically Theoretically, right. yeah. Cyberpunk 2099, baby. Isn't Keanu Reeves like in there somehow? He's he's there. He's one of the major characters. Kinu. Kinu Reeves. Yeah. Kinu Reeves. Kinu Reeves. <laughs> he's, uh, what is his name? His name is Johnny Silverhand in the game. Whoa, what a name. Johnny C plays the guitar. That that sounds like a cowboy name. Did you see Grand Game of Thrones? Yeah. You know when Jamie had that fucking like gold hand made? <laughs> yeah. Jamie Golden Hand. Jamie Golden Hand. Dude, that would be a badass name. Golden Hand. I don't know why he didn't just like knock a bitch out with that hand. He did. Oh, he did? Yeah, that was, yeah. That was, oh, I missed he, that. he fought with it because he didn't know how to fight anymore. Because <laughs> he got his fucking hand cut off. It's heavy like a rock. I would imagine. You just smash people's faces in with your hand. Gold is supposedly not very heavy though. I don't, I don't know. I've never hold. I've never held like a, a brick of gold before. Oh, you so, have uh, So I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. Well, I didn't. I'm not like you. I wasn't trying to let the riff rap on my <laughs> right. podcast. Uh, but yeah, this is all very economics based. Uh, yeah, I think I remember saying I would never do a politic um podcast with you and here i am sort of well this is the economics podcast. it's yeah. yeah how much would you be willing to pay for cyberpunk because i'm sure they're gonna have like all kinds of weird like you know dlcs and stuff oh sure i, I think they have like just the regular standard edition and then an ultimate edition ultimate edition are you gonna pay for the ultimate edition no i don't need a fucking statue of v on a motorcycle <laughs> You don't want more statues around your house? No. You don't want more crap around your house? I don't. I think... I don't even have... I have one statue. It's Geralt of Rivia, and that's all I need. That's all you need? Yeah. 
It's on my coffee table. It's the only thing on your coffee <laughs> yeah. table. He's very proud of it. I am. Uh, <laughs> Sword broke off. I need to super glue that back on, actually. Oh, so there's a lot of games that are like doing... This is the gaming podcast? It is now. Oh. There's a lot of games that are doing like almost like four versions, right? Mm-hmm. There's like uh, the regular base PS4 version and like the deluxe edition for that. And then there's like the upgrade, right? So you can buy like... If you buy a PS4 game, right, Mm -hmm. that has, like, the PS5 upgrade built in, it's almost like a deluxe edition. So you have to pay more for it if you want to be able to play it on the PS4 and then also upgrade it to the PS5 version when you get a PS5. And then also just a PS5 version. There's a lot of shit going on. This is the problem with capitalism. Yeah. This is... You know what? Do you ever think, like what video games would be like if the soviet <laughs> union like never collapsed i don't i don't would they what do you what do you think what are your thoughts on dude I, actually i think like so much so many things would be different because like like in a good way i i hope so in a good way yeah i would think so because the soviet union like that was the only like competitor to like liberal capitalism like it was the only like major player that like could compete with it with like a different economic system but not did, not saying that the ussr was like good or bad or whatever right. just that it like it was like a counterbalancing force on like the united states like do you think that like we might not have all this weird like dlc and like upgrade bullshit like if the soviet union like was still around and they were making video games well if they cared so much about art then yeah i would imagine we would still have the dlcs i feel like games would be even more expensive than they are now well no because they they probably wouldn't do that in a in a supposedly communist economic system because there's no profit motive in a communist economic system so they have nothing to gain by charging you more for weird stuff they would just give it to you and I, it would compete with the United States, so the United States would start making like more bomb ass games because they'd be like, "We can't have the Soviets like make better games than us." I guess that's we fair. can't we can't let communism like so look cool. I think that the competition would be good. Yeah, yeah. that's what I, I think. That's what I mean. Like, do you ever wonder like how different the video game industry would be if the Soviets were still around? Because I feel like it would add like a competition. That's just not there at the moment. Yeah. Uh, now that I think about it, I wonder what um, Microsoft is going to do about all the the hype that's going on with the PS5. Because it seems like still the PS5 is like... It seems like the hottest item. It like, does. It se- nobody gives a shit about the new Xbox. All it is is like an upgrade over the last one. There's yeah. nothing strange about it. It's just a little black box. No new features. It's more really. powerful. No. It's just more powerful. That's it. Yeah. They have an updated UI, but, like, not not much. Damn. And they give, like, PC gamers such a rag because they're like, oh, you got to upgrade your, your gaming PC every two years. Bitch, I haven't upgraded my gaming PC in eight <laughs> years. In eight fucking years. And it still plays, like, every AAA title, like, no no problem. Fuck and yet, like, y'all... Crusader been... Kings is not a AAA title. <laughs> Crusader Kings 3 <laughs> is, a, is a quadruple <laughs> A title. That's a, that's a real thing now, by the way. What? Yeah, quadruple A. What is quadruple Ubisoft A? Ubisoft is actually using that term as a descriptor for some of their fucking games. Oh, God, I hate the French. <laughs> I hate the French so much. Are they from France? I thought they were, like, Swedish or something. Oh, were they? I thought they were French-Canadian. Montreal French. is... Where's Montreal? Canada. That's in Canada, but that's the French portion of Canada. I believe so. I a think lot, that's in Quebec. Yeah, a lot of a lot of game studios are in Montreal. Yeah, they they're the one that usually makes the um, the Far Cry series. I think Ubisoft. I you think say it with like a French accent. Ubisoft. Ubisoft. I don't know. Can you speak any French? Dans ce que je parle français. Je suis, and that's about all I can say. Yeah, that means I am. Yeah, nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. I learned a little bit of French, but I forgot most of it. <laughs> Le and la are the articles I know that much. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Le. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bunch of weird sounds. <laughs> that's, uh, that's how you say I love you in French. That's how you say beef, like beef, like beef. Only good bread tastes this way or sound this way, right? That's a, what is that, a line from Ratatouille? Yeah. When she's showing him like 
the good bread versus the shitty bread. I still have never seen Ratatouille. What? No, dude. Are I you know. kidding me? No. I thought you'd seen it. No. You've never seen Ratatouille. You send me memes of Ratatouille all the time. Because it's like, because I know you like Ratatouille, yeah. and it's like the one fucking DVD you have at your house is Ratatouille. Oh, yeah. And it's on like a pedestal with like a light shining what on it. What other DVD should I own? I don't know. But like, I knew you liked it, so I would send you Ratatouille memes. But I've never seen it myself, no. <clears throat> you should. It's a good movie. I understand. It's a really good movie. I understand the premise. Do you? Yeah. It's Some, like a little rat who wants to be a cook, and he takes over. He gets in this guy's hat, right? This guy who can't cook for shit, mm-hmm. and he starts controlling him with his hair. That sounds like our relationship. <laughs> that does sound like our relationship. Uh, hmm. I was talking to Carla the other day, and I was, she was finding out that apparently I know a whole lot about like game studios. I just know a bunch of different game studios, and like. It's it's a weird fucking thing that I know that nobody else knows. You're a gamer. I should have introduced you uh, as, as a, my gamer guest. I'm I'm a gamer slash chat slash chat. I am a hybrid. Yeah, you're a hybrid chat. Gamer. I don't. <laughs> all right. I don't think that. Okay. I got I gotta cut you off. I don't think that that exists. I don't, <laughs> Look I don't at think me. you can be a you, chat. You know it's true. I don't know that it's true. I'm looking at you right now. Uh, yeah. Welcome back to the Garfonomics Gaming Podcast. That's just your podcast thing. If anything changes in any way, you say welcome back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've always done that. That's my greatest segue. <laughs> I like this pen. Is this your pen or is this Haley's pen? That's my pen. I like it. Yeah. I uh, Actually, I got it as a gift. That's right. Oh, oh, oh my God. My pen. The $100 pen. My $100 pen. Shattered into pieces. <laughs> that would be so funny. Like... Mm. If you, I could become like the CFO of like a company or something, I could just like make make fun of somebody if they pull out like a six hundred dollar pen, you know? Like, what's wrong with you? You're fired. Yeah, I'd be like, what the hell is this? Six hundred dollar pen? Don't come back in here until you come back with a twelve hundred dollar pen, idiot. <laughs> wear, wear a tie when you talk to me about money. <laughs> Do you like wearing ties? No, I like wearing ties. I don't. It, it, it hurts my neck. Well, you, you got to learn how to tie it. I tie it's it. Probably the, it's probably the fucking shirt that's hurting your neck. Probably. Get a bigger shirt. I don't like them. Um, shirts? No, I don't like ties. No. You, you should use a clip-on. <clears throat> I, I used did. a clip-on when I was a kid. I used a clip-on when I was a kid, too. I had to go to... Um, so I went to a private school, right? Yeah. And I had to go to chapel because it was like fucking a Christian private school, as you do. Right? Hell yeah. Classic. And we had chapel on Wednesdays, and fuck, it was so, oh my god, it was worse than church. Way worse than church. So boring. I can imagine. But I had to wear a clip-on tie, and it was nice to have a clip-on tie instead of, Did like, you feel cool? It, I did, yeah. Yeah, instead of sharp. Because, like, all the other dumb little nutsacks didn't know how to tie a tie. Yeah. So they always, like, had their tie, like, very stupidly on, and mine always looked very nice because it was clip-on. Yeah. That's pretty, you know what, clip-on ties are actually kind of smart, too, because, like, what if somebody grabbed your tie and tried to, like, noose you up in, like, a fight, you know? Yeah. But if yeah. it's, like, a clip-on, it just comes off. It's like a, it's like a, like a gecko's tail. Like, they get caught, and it just, like, comes off. You think James They're like, Bond? I can get a new tie, bitch, but I'm, like, free now. <laughs> you think, <laughs> nice try. You think Mr. Bond uses a clip-on tie for safety reasons? Of course, because otherwise, like, I don't know, I don't know the James Bond villains, but, like, the guy with the jaw would just, like, grab his, like, tie and they choke him, hang, hang him like a noose, you uh, know? Actually, you know, um, a new 007 game is being developed. Oh, by um, IO Interactive. Interesting. I, think it's I know nothing about like, James Bond, by the way. I know very little about James. I know that he's a spy. Yes, and I gathered that been, much. There have been many iterations <laughs> of him. I, I gathered that much. I he remember, usually fights on a train. Otherwise, it's not a fucking James Bond film. Of course not. It has got to be gadgets. I know there's gadgets. There's a car that shoots people just That's for cool. fun. That is pretty cool. That's cool. That's the coolest thing about James Bond, though. Other than that, he's just... He's kind of a boring character. He is. I think I, I think I heard some discussion about how like maybe the next James Bond could actually be a woman, right? Mm-hmm. And some people think that like that's cool, like a nice little like new way of twisting things up. Jamie Bond, right? And then other people are saying that it just doesn't work like that because James Bond is like a very specific 
like feeling you're going for like has to be a specific person that steps into like the same persona it's always been what some people yeah like lots, that makes lots, no sense lots of men and women have been saying that that it couldn't be a woman why i don't know just traditional i guess just yeah. on the basis yeah. that Snapping it was women's microphone women's <laughs> women's yeah i will never let a women's on this podcast <laughs> That is a promise. <laughs> no women's talking about neo feudalism. No women's allowed, especially on the neo feudalism <laughs> podcast. I actually, I'm going to have a women's on the podcast next week. How are you? Yeah. Well, I hope people enjoy our nonsense. I guess. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll, I'll trim it down. I'll I'll cut a lot of this out, especially all the times where you're like doing this into the microphone. <laughs> I'm not doing that the whole time. Or you're doing like this, and that, and that. like this. Yeah. You're doing this. Slurping the drink. You were slurping. You were. <laughs> All the times we like didn't talk about economics. Yeah, right. We talked about it a little bit, though. We did talk about it a little bit, but that, it's, that it, was the deal. That was the deal. I had you on as my resident gaming correspondent, mm. and uh, I tried to connect it to economics, and I think I did an okay job. Yeah. We did. We get talked a little economics. I didn't get in any, into any math. Math. I, I haven't gotten into like any actual like economics like math yet. I haven't gotten into any math in like four years. If there's one thing that people want to listen to in a podcast, mm. it's somebody <laughs> explaining bond rates over an audio uh, <laughs> an audio, audio medium. medium. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me describe to you how mortgage backed securities work. Uh, <laughs> Until I fall asleep. Yeah. Maybe I'll do like a purely like not even like a like a comedy or like a, like a joke podcast, but just like a straight economics podcast, like no joke, and you can listen to that to go to sleep. Do people like give you feedback on the on the episodes? Yeah, actually, you know what mm. I um, <clears throat> back when it was purely on SoundCloud. Yeah, I got a lot of like DMs asking me like questions. And I would get, like, I remember somebody asked me, like, a stock market question, like, straight up on one of uh, <coughs> one of my old episodes on yeah. SoundCloud. And I was explaining, like, how margin trading worked to somebody on my SoundCloud page through my DMs for the Garfonomics podcast. I, that might be the person who uh, became my Patreon. The dude. My one patron, yeah. That's right, that's right. I've actually I've been trying to get on a podcast called the Garfcast. Garfcast. <laughs> yeah. That's a bad name, but I I like it. It's a great name. I'll tell you what, I tell almost me. named this podcast the Garfcast before I found out there was already a, a podcast called the Garfcast. <laughs> and now I desperately want to be on it, but I haven't uh I haven't done that much work to be on it. I've just been like commenting on their Twitter page right. and like liking things. And they've been like liking me back. Uh, We're kind of like flirting with each other. But like, I haven't like reached out and been like, hey, put me on your fucking podcast. There's Let a, me be a guest. There's a relationship building up right there's now. There's a blooming relationship. We're right. like blushing and fluttering our eyes at each other, right. but we're too scared to make the first move. Do you ever hear that like um, when girls move their hair like over their neck yeah. to like expose their neck? That's a sign of like they're into Have you been taking like pickup artist classes again i told you to st no. they're, they're scams no, you I, gotta stop spending I, your money I, on i these. stopped going to those okay. but i actually learned that one from letter kenny oh, okay <laughs> well, as long as you got it from letter kenny yeah, and not right. by like sending some sicko 80 dollars <laughs> for tips <laughs> I saw an ad in the newspaper and I was like, please teach me all you can about women. I'm signing up for all of these <laughs> seminars. <laughs> God. Do you want to try the three person? We could try a three person, but I have one microphone. I would bring my mic. We could all huddle around this microphone and look at each other in the eyes. Yeah, we put it on the ground and we sit like cross leg in a triangle. We, no, we link arms. <laughs> <laughs> we link arms and huddle around the microphone. Um... I don't know. That's like an hour's worth of raw material. Right here? Yeah. I could make an episode out of this. Could work some magic. What do you mean make an episode? That was the plan, right? Yeah. Yeah, for, for this week to make an episode out of this. Yes, I'm going to make an episode out of this. Right. What are you going to do with all the extra footage? I have no idea. Delete it. You it's going gonna to go in the garbage audio bin. 
Wow. I'm, I'm trying rejects. to think. I'm trying to think of like a pun for like Garfield and garbage, but it's just not happening. Garbage. It's not happening. Field. You see what I mean? It just yeah. it doesn't work. That's true. I'm still trying to make it happen. Uh, me too, but like my brain is just going nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> my brain's going in the trash along with this unusable audio and uh, Odie. There we go. Odie. Kick, kick Odie in the trash can. I was thinking Odie's a good name. You know what? You know what else is a good name? Hmm. Mingo. Like that street that we. Mingo. I know a girl named Mango. Yeah? yeah. That's her real name. I think so. Should name herself that. Maybe. It's still cool though. I guess. I don't know. I think Mingo is a cooler name than Mango. I don't like mangoes. Mango kind of sounds like a, not to name shame, but it sounds like a stripper's name. Mango. Mango. I don't know if stripper's the word. Mango. Definitely code for something. It does. Mango. You know what? Mango does seem like a sexual name. Yeah. Coco, too. Coco was my dog's name, you sick fuck. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> sick fucker. <laughs> <laughs> the sex pervert is on my podcast. <laughs> I forgot that was her name. That was my dog's name. I never. I, never I didn't know her. you thought of her like that. Little Mexican dog. Yeah. I do date mostly Hispanic girls. Okay. <laughs> not like not like specifically. That's not what I'm after. It just happens as a as a racial fetish. Yeah. Uh, as a problematic fetish. <laughs> I uh, have you seen All Gas No Breaks? Yeah, <laughs> I like that guy. <laughs> yeah, I just recently found him. <laughs> He's dope. He is cool. I like him. He just what he he interviewed like the Proud Boys or whatever the fuck. Oh shit! Yeah. In uh, what are they Seattle? Uh, they were here. What? I thought they were in Seattle. <laughs> they do. They like, move around. Yeah, they're like inter- they're <clears throat> um, uh, national. Oh, I thought they lived in. Seattle, interesting. No, dude, one of the little fucking weasel-faced idiots who runs the Proud Boys. Yeah. That's Wait the... a second. No, sorry. I'm not thinking. I'm not thinking about the Proud Boys. I'm thinking about Patriot Front, which Patriot. is like the same thing. It sounds like the same thing. Well, one of the weasel-faced little fucks who runs uh, mm-hmm. Patriot Front. Yeah. He is. Don't tell anybody of this, but he is living very close by to where you and I are right now. Really? I'm talking two cities away. Or two towns away, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'm sure I could guess the town name. Yeah, but I remember when they showed up to the book fair last year mm. and trapped us all in... Uh, oh, that's right. And they had, like, flares, and they were chanting, like, blood and soil and shit. And that, that was the Proud Boys, or that was the that other That was one? Patriot Front. Patriot Front. Yeah. Mm. Patriot Front. Yeah. And then I remember there were a bunch of guys, like, in the bar at the time who wanted to go out there and like kick their asses but we were all like no like they're gonna call the police or something they're gonna bitch and they're gonna make themselves the victims you Mm. stay in here did you call the cops no uh i think one i remember one woman was wanting to call the cops but it was an anarchist book fair so most people did not want to call the cops yeah that makes sense yeah uh I'm out of stuff to talk about on the podcast. This is a lot of material. Thank you for tuning in. Wait, hold on. Should we have like a real, a real like goodbye? A real that's the end. That's all folks kind of deal. I never have a real goodbye. I always just say like, see ya. And I turn it off. All right. See ya. Thanks for tuning in to Garfonomics, the world's best unofficial, official Garfield-based economics podcast. Mostly official. Mostly official. Thank you for joining me and my guest, the gaming sex pervert, for a long discussion about uh, uh, complicated bond interest rates, uh, very intricate, uh, well-thought-out, historically-backed analyses of the 2006-2007 analyses. Analyses, yeah. uh, financial crisis. Uh, yeah, uh, great, great episode. This is going to take me all the way to the top. Look out, Joe Rogan. <laughs>